And the third one, and you're going to love this one, the third lesson I got from 9-11 is that men must be men or the world comes crashing down. Now, whenever you speak in praise of manhood now, uh, there's always somebody who says, well, a woman could do that. And here's my answer. No, she couldn't. A woman could do it. But if men abandon their posts, if men abandon the rules of manhood, which require bravery, which require sacrifice, which require standing up for the women in our lives, the world comes crashing down. And this is a good time to stop for a minute and remember the men of 9-11, the firefighters and police. And this is something I can barely keep in my head, who charged into the buildings as they were crumbling to get people out. Without men like that, the world comes tumbling down. I want to remember, I should remember the Engine 54 Ladder 4 Battalion 9 in Midtown lost 15 men, 15 men that day, okay? I mean, the engine companies are not that big. You visit, I don't know if you've been to New York anywhere, even in big city, they're not that big. 15 men is a huge, huge number. Talk about Tom Burnett, Mark Bingham, Jeremy Glick, and Todd Beamer, who took back United 93 and drove it into the ground before it could reach where they, what they think it was. I think it was D.C. What made those guys so American, such American men, is not that they had courage. All kinds of people have courage. But that they broke the rules when new information came in. That was an incredibly American thing to do. The rules, the thing that people were trained to do when a plane was hijacked was to let the hijackers do what they want. They were just going to fly to Miami, park the plane, you know, get their ransom or whatever, and let everybody go. So there was no point in fighting back and getting killed. But one of these guys, Tom Burnett, was on the phone with his wife, Dina, and she said, that's not what's happening. They're hijacking planes all over. They're crashing them at the buildings. And they decided that they were going to take back the plane. An amazing act of courage. Without men like that, the world comes crashing down. I mean, I, I could go through so many, but I also want to mention uh, Chris Stevens, and Sean Smith and Glenn Doherty and Tyrone Woods, who died 9-11-2012 in Benghazi. You know, these, are, these ideas that we hold, these ideas that come from our God, <laughs> because of these ideas, there are certain things you can't have. If you want people to be free, you can't be equal. Because if you're free, you're going to be better at something than me. Maybe I'll be better at something than you. If you're free, people are going to rise at different levels. So you can't be equal. You can't have equal outcomes. But if you want to be free, you can't be always at peace. You have to fight sometimes because people want to enslave you. That's the human nature. People want to enslave you, and some people want to give up their freedom because it's too much trouble. Without men to fight those battles, without men to fight those battles, you will not be free for long, and the world will come crashing down. And today, and I'll talk about this later on at the end of the show because we've had a huge, in Hollywood, we've had a huge bout of Me Too toxic masculinity, but we hear all the time about toxic masculinity. And believe me, like I said, I work in Hollywood, I, I see a lot of toxic masculinity, all right? But on 9-11, I think we should remember what real masculinity looks like and how much we owe it, you know, how much we owe to the men who fulfill the roles of men, you know? And I think that that is the third thing I took away from 9-11. We're not all soldiers, we're not all firemen, we're not all policemen, we're not all heroes. But I think that I do believe that each and every one of us have a little piece of this beautiful idea in our hands, and we have to defend it with all the courage we have, no matter how they shout at us, no matter what they, how they scream at us. And I think ultimately that there's going to have to be a phalanx of men who stand for these things and hold them up, because that's the only way that they'll survive. So that is what I take away from 9-11. In the end, you know, we can't remember pain. It's a really interesting thing about the human mind. We can't remember pain. If we could re actually remember pain, no woman would ever have a second child. <laughs> I mean, you forget, you forget how bad it is and you go back into the fray. And because we can't remember pain, all of history eventually becomes literature. That means all of history eventually becomes a story that we tell. And we have to tell that story and we have to tell it truthfully and we have to remember because there are always people willing to tell stories that aren't true, stories that promote bad values, stories that promote bad ideas. And we stand on a tower of great ideas. And as I said in my speech this morning, that tower is still standing and we have to never let it fall.